Uh, hey, I'm Yang Zhang. Uh, I'm working in PNG corporate function on uh, data and modeling science. Uh, we try to, you know, build a different model, in particular, Bayesian belief network model to understand the consumer's behaviors and also uh, product features. It's like what product features are attractive to a given segment of consumers in general. Uh, so today, uh, here is my talk. Uh, we, we call this framework right now, we are prototyping, it's called Bayesian Information Fusion. Or you know, in the literature, people also call it uh, data fusion, uh, Bayesian data fusion. Uh, or similar terms, the general idea is, you know, if you have a different uh, type of studies, or you, if you have similar studies, that's, that's, I mean, pretty much you can run um, meta-analysis, or you build a meta-network model on different set of data. You can, you know, uh, glue the data, glue the, put the information together. But what if you have a totally different uh, uh, studies in different uh, contexts, in different uh, region? Uh, how can you fuse the information together using Bayesian belief network? Uh, second part, I'm gonna, you know, go through some of the assumptions of the method. Uh, we implement in the uh, Bayesian network using BaseLab. And then I will do some uh, validity check using simulated data. The idea is, you know, I specify, like, you know, uh, <coughs> Linda mentioned earlier, a lot of, you know, uh, Stephen, I think, also mentioned earlier, we first specify a model, meaning the variables and also the structure of the model, including the parameters of the model, and then generate some data, generate some particles. Uh, using the specified model and then use my method to try to recover the software, of course, to recover the network, see how faithfully we can recover the network, the distribution, the prediction, and then uh, I'm gonna give a, a PNG case study, of course, uh, is, I'm gonna use general uh, names, not the PNG specific names, go through the PNG case study, and then it's a summary. Uh, so here, here is the typical uh, consumer data we can collect. You know, consumer using different CPG, uh, consumer pack the goods in different contexts. They could use it in work environment, in home, uh, in different places. And also they probably use uh, the product in quite a different way than, you know, even uh, like uh, our product researchers assume. We have tons of data from different uh, contexts. The idea is how do we put this, all, all of this data together to have a holistic understanding of consumer. Uh, so here, <coughs> let's see. So here, here is the uh, big picture. Let's say, if we wanted to investigate a problem, we probably have different uh, methods to launch different studies to, to investigate the same, same phenomena in a project. I, I, I mean, I will not uh, disclose uh, further information on this. The idea is, you know, let's say we launch three different uh, type of studies. Study A, you assign the study to a person, to a, to a team team member and then the findings is A1, A2, and then study B is another study. The, again, these are the totally different studies, not similar studies, so that you cannot run meta-analysis or meta-network model. They are totally different uh, studies in different uh, context. And also study C, you have findings C1, C2. How do you like uh, reach to a final conclusion on the project regarding the same, you know, same problem. Most of the time, we rely on, on team meetings. Essentially, you meet multiple times along the project to try to say, I found A, B, C, you found A2, B2, C2. Okay, qualitatively, we summarize the information, read to a conclusion. So the idea of this information fusion model is that can we, can we build a, uh, mathematical model, BB model, 
to fuse this information together so that we can quantitatively extract the information uh, from different sources and then you know, summarize the information. Most importantly, let's say in scenario one, it would be great if you have all the data, if you have all the studies, right? The more studies you launch, the higher the cost. If you have all the studies, you can check the consistency of your conclusion, right? Or you know, like uh, a body of evidence uh, in another language. So most importantly, another context is actually this part. Uh, does it project well? No. It's actually on the left part. If you only have uh, data from some studies, can you infer some information which typically, uh, let's say you have information on study A, can you infer some information on study C? So we call that uh, cross inference, right? I will go to a little bit detail later. So that's the uh, high level idea. And then the assumptions of causes, you know, studies in different contexts, they need to share a set of common variables I mean, in uh, our case, such as consumer needs and attitudes, the idea is, you know, let's say whether you prefer, a consumer prefer natural ingredients in shampoo or not, either I provide head and shoulders our product to you, or you know, Dove, our competitor's product to you, uh, your preference will not change, your needs and attitudes will not change. So that's the idea. It's like a, some set of the variables, common variables, uh, will not change in different study context. That's first assumption we made. But the second assumption we made is uh, this set of common variables can be consistently measured across context. I mean, that, that is equally to say they are kind of independent of a context. <clears throat> Uh, regarding the need and attitude, you know, there are, you know, papers from Greg Allen B. How do you construct this set of uh, variables if you are interested in? And uh, this uh, a little bit like uh, cartoon mathematics on the idea. So essentially, uh, overall, we, you know, you, you observe the different events in different contexts. The, the overall thing we try to do, the, the model, mathematical model we try to build is really try to predict the joint probability among events happened across study context. Like, you know, in the middle part, we say it's a consumer needs and attitudes, we call it a CNA. And also, you know, let's say study A, we, we, we have variables called A, given consumer needs and attitudes, and also, you know, study B, given B, uh, given consumer need energy, you know, some other studies. And then the, the mathematical framework is simply, you know, uh, the BBN, uh, the chain rule, you can write joint probability this way. And uh, here uh, is what the study look like, again, Let's say consumer is the center of our problem. We try to understand consumer holistically. You run a study uh, on the right side. Let's say this, I mean, I, I give a little bit uh, more information. Let's say this is a concept study, right? You just present ideas to consumer, whether they like it or not. This is you know, much cheaper than, let's say, study B. You have to have some prototype, right? physical product to let them test and tell you how do they think of your product. Usually you know, this is, uh, study B is way expensive than, than study A. So in study A, because of the, the way you, you set up the study, you can only collect the variable, you know, you can always ask a consumer's needs and attitudes. You can collect the variable like uh, OAR is called overall rating. And you can also collect information on other variables is termed A var, variables in study A. And just a similar thing in study B, 
you can collect the common set of variables on needs and choose, but you will not have variables on overriding or you know uh, the variable typically you can do in study A. These are the like uh, missing by design. You, you simply cannot collect that kind of data because of, the, uh, because of the way you set up the experiment. So the idea is, you know, given this data, missing is by design, how do we construct a model so that with information from left side, we can infer information from the right side? Or in earlier, yeah, the scenario ones, you know, if you can, in some of the studies, you can probably collect uh, majority of the data, whether the evidence is consistent or not across context. So here in the middle part, uh, that's the key thing. We try to say these are the common belief, common variables shared by different uh, studies. We can represent this part of uh, variables. I mean, essentially, there's knowledge on this con on consumer, right? We represent this common belief using a uh, uh, network. <clears throat> You, th you can simply you know, stack the data and then build a network here. And then for study A, you only have uh, part of the data. You build a, a sub-network using the, you know, the data in the yellow rectangle. And then <coughs> in study B, you have another set of variable. Some of the variable are missing by design. Uh, you, build, uh, you, re you, know, you build a network uh, using the variable private to b plus the common belief. And once you have the, all of this, you can literally bridge them together in base lab. So again, this is uh, the, the procedure, you know. You have a study from uh, two different contacts. I mean, could be multiple contacts, right? You have three contacts. Uh, five contacts, doesn't matter, the method will work, and you build the network on the common variables, is the common belief represented by the middle part. I mean, you can, if you want, you can refer to, there are some limitations or some assumptions regarding the, the common variable, what kind of network you can build on that part, what kind of structure uh, you can have with study A, study B. Uh, you can refer to this paper. One, I think this is uh, the co-author of Lino, right? <clears throat> the earlier part. So here, here's the validation uh, for the validity check on the simulated data. So on the top is the simulated, uh, uh, it's the ground truth network, meaning I specify the nodes, I specify the links, the arcs, and also specify the CPT table, conditional probability table. And on the right, let's say, is uh, study B. On the uh, left is study, uh, is a study A. I mean, these are the variable you're not probably familiar. Uh, to some of you, OAR is overall rating, and the value is the value question. And in the middle part, let's say, uh, need a need be attitude, and in the right part is you know again overall rating overall rating although they have the similar name but they were in different context they are not exactly the same thing like overall rating in concept overall rating on prototype that's different so also purchase intent loyalty and then you know use this uh, ground truth network you can generate uh, data. Meaning, uh, uh, according to this network, gen I generate, let's say, 1,000 data points, and then try to use the procedure I laid out earlier to build the network. So the, the, you know, just to visually check the structure, it recovered the structure really nicely, and a lot of the parameters, I, I only show the, <clears throat> the link strengths you you know check the number they are they are really similar it's not exactly same but you know best lab really can recover uh, the parameters the structure uh, 
you know, essentially the Grunge Truth Network are pretty much uh, some of the details can be recovered. And the second step I checked is, okay, uh, okay, I, I know the structure and the parameters are roughly similar, and then what about the marginal distribution of my network, right? Using the 100, uh, 1,000 uh, data points generated from my network. So again, on your left side is the Grunge Truth Network, and uh, on my right, side is the recovered network, you know, you just, you know, visually check them, they have a similar profile. That means, you know, the marginal distribution are also similar. And then I further check the prediction to try to predict each of the nodes by, you know, essentially set each of the nodes as unobservable, use all other nodes, information from all other nodes to predict the one you hold out, you set as unobservable. Repeat this over all the uh, variables. So again, uh, the left side is, is the ground truth network. Um, test data is on the top, and also on the tested samples, meaning uh, independent test samples. And on the bottom is the learning, uh, learning samples. On the right are the, you know, the numbers on uh, test samples and the learning samples. And again, we can, we can see, you know, the numbers is not as good as uh, ground truth network, but you know, it, it makes sense in terms of overall precision, mean precision, you know, all the metrics we check, they are, they, are, they are lower, they are relatively lower than the ground truth network, but you know, it is reasonable. Also, you know, the learning, the metrics on the learning is, I mean, definitely is better than the independent uh, holdout test samples. So that's the another check I did. And then the last check I did is, you know, I'm trying to say, okay, let's uh, predict something I'm mainly interested in. Let's say overall rating and the purchase intent. Purchase intent is the, is the WPI. Uh, if we use information from all data, so in this case, let me uh, go through a little bit of detail maybe. So the base size is uh, 1,000. I you know, generate another 1,000 data independent from the, from the data I used to learn the network structure, to, to learn the network structure. And then if I use all data, the overall precision, I'm predicting overall rating, purchasing tank is not 80, 82. 76% if I only use study B. Remember study B is the, the right study on the right. Uh, let's go to the structure. It's on the, um, on your right side, essentially, if you know the information, because my interest, uh, my target, my interest variables are on the right side, meaning if you have the information on the right side, you can do equivalently well. Uh, as you have all the data. That's because, you know, in the middle part, you know, essentially all your Markov blanket variables included here. But the most interesting thing is, you know, what if you only know the data on the, on the left side? What is, a pre uh, what, what is a prediction? So in this case, 60%, 42%, you know, they are not perfect, but it's better than you have nothing, right? At the bottom, uh, rule is like uh, I assume if you if you don't use the method you just randomly guess the answer on each of the question right what is your probability to achieve the overall precision as in uh, rule one in the first row in the first line using study on study a only it means your, your probability to achieve the same level of prediction it's, it's really, really low. You have no chance to achieve that precision. And then, you know, after this validity check, uh, what I did is we tried to run through this on a PNG case study. So we picked some common 
variables shared across studies. That's step one. And then step two, we build the BBN sub network to represent the common variables. And then uh, we build sub network on study A and study B separately, and then link them together uh, using using base lab. So that's the that's a part again. In the middle is the again is the is the bridge variables. These are the common variables, the all common belief represented in a common belief on consumer knowledge collected of, across a different context. And then on the right is uh, is the study A. I, I'm sorry, I somehow uh, uh, mismatched the location. But you know, on this side, this time on the right side is a study A. On the left side is a study B. And the red variables are the common set of variables. And the purple, the dark purple, is the key variables in study B. And uh, uh, <coughs> purple variables are the you know other variables you can collect in uh, study B. There's B01, B03, et cetera. I mean, similar thing for, for variables in study A. So using the procedure, this is the you know, network I built using the method. You can connect, connect them together. Of course, you know, uh, by definition, let's say if you already know the middle part, you probably don't need study a the information on the right side to predict something in study B. But the interesting thing is, you know, the more variables you collect information from consumer, uh, the higher the higher cost you're gonna uh, you know it got, it's gonna occur. So the idea is you know what if you don't know even the common part in future study you only have some information on a you on, on some of the private variable and the key variables on study a what is the inference on study b that's the most interesting part. And then the kind of question we can answer the first scenario is you know cross inference. We try to link overrating from one context to overrating of another context. So the question we can, the question you know the uh, we we can ask is you know what is the response of uh, OAR rating in context B if we observed a twenty percent boost of uh, overall rating in context A. Assume you know you can achieve this by doing something, let's say, improvement in product benefit CV one. So this is the you know like uh, information you can infer. You do you know twenty percent boost on uh, overall rating in contact A, and then you observe you, you you can see what is the distribution of overall rating in another context. At least you know you know the the answer is of course you know is. Precisely, you can observe them. You you can have a seven percent, uh, almost eight percent boost in the overall rating in contact B on average. Or another way we can interpret this is you know, you, if you observe that the distribution is highly uncertain, if it is flat out, you, you can probably, let's say, if I have to launch study B, which variables should I prioritize? That's, that's the way you know, you, uh, we can leverage the information. And then another scenario is we can check consistency across different uh, contexts and uh, studies. If you have uh, money to launch all the studies or if you happen to have data from all the contexts, in this case, we're going to say, OK, whether you know, our total effect on overall rating consistent across the studies. In study B, in study A, uh, we, we can check, you know, these are the total effect on the common set of variables. You know, they are not exactly the same value, but if you check the rank, they are, they are quite uh, similar. If you calculate the similarity between the two vectors, they are actually extremely similar. Uh, yeah, so that's the summary. I think uh, we can use this information fusion model 
to integrate information from different sources into one quantitative framework to do cross inference and uh, check the consistency of some signals. The whole modeling process can be implemented uh, using uh, BaseLab. Once you have that model, you can do omnidirection inference on the model. And we also did some validity check and uh, run some case study on PNG data. Uh, that's it.